Floor's a bit shinier now. How about, let's do it again. Let's get crazy with it. Um, what? Welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Thousand One Games. I'm your host, Gaming J, and today we're hopping into Planet Fall by uh, an Interlogic Science Fiction game by Interlogic Science Fiction. It's a game on the Apple II. It's an old Infocom text adventure game. You can see the sort of opening scrawl here. Uh, here's the release number and serial number, I guess. Um, basically, this is a science fiction Infocom text adventure game with a lot of wit and humor, a la Douglas Adams. You get to play as a space archaeologist, maybe a la Indiana Jones, um, and you have a sidekick. One of the big selling points for this game is you have a sidekick. You have a character that hangs around with you and does stuff? I mean, like, yeah, it sounds so trivial nowadays, but I guess it was novel at the time, apparently. Apparently? So, um, this game also features a real timeline, so if you take too long to do actions, you can actually miss out on things or die, which is, you know, so it's got some mechanics going on. Um, these old text adventure games, though, they just feel Apple II-ish to me. I think we played Eamon uh, on the Apple II, we might have played Zork on the Apple II as well, if I'm remembering correctly. Could be wrong on that, but I think I'm remembering correctly. So what the hell, why not? Let's just continue the trend and keep going with these, uh, with Apple II being our text adventure platform. I mean, we don't get to play Apple II very often, so we gotta use it for something. Um, Alright, so here we go. Um, another routine day of drudgery aboard the stellar patrol ship Feinstein. This morning's assignment for a central or for a certain lowly ensign seventh class, scrubbing the filthy metal deck at the port end of level nine. With your patrol issue self-contained multi-purpose all-weather scrub brush, you shine the floor with a diligence born of the knowledge that at any moment dreaded ensign first class blather the bane of your shipboard existence could appear boy talk about a run-on sentence deck nine this is a featureless corridor similar to every other corridor on the ship it curves away to starboard and a gangway leads up to port is the entrance to one of the ship's primary escape pods the pod bulkhead is closed all right so our job is to scrub the ship, I guess. We have a score of zero out of a possible 4,469. Boy, what an odd number. They couldn't have made it 4,500. You know, like, round up, guys. Um, I find these old adventure games really... They, like, play any Sierra game, and it has, like, a really odd point counter. Like, it ends at such, like, an odd random number. Um, anyway, let's start with some adventure game uh, tropes, like look around. Let's see what happens. Um, oh, we just get another descrip description of Deck 9. Okay, how about scrub the deck? See if it can understand complex commands. The floor is a bit shinier now. The alien ambassador from the planet Bloke Bibbin Gordo ambles toward you from down the corridor. He is munching on something resembling an enormous stalk of celery, and he leaves a trail of green slime on the deck. He stops nearby and winces as a pool of slime begins forming beneath him on your newly polished deck. The ambassador wheezes loudly and hands you a brochure outlining his planet's major exports. Did he just pee on my clean floor? What is this, like Poppy from Seinfeld? Okay, how about let's, uh, actually, let's, let's try talking to this guy first. Talk to Ambassador. Let's see what he says. The ambassador taps his translator and then touches his center knee and his left ear. The bloke, big and gorgon, the equivalent of shrugging. The ambassador recites a plea for your coexistence between your races. How about let's let's try this. Let's go let's go full nuts on him and ta attack ambassador. Let's see what happens. Um, the ambassador is startled and emits an amazing quantity of slime, which spreads across the section of the deck you just polished. The ambassador inquires whether you are interested in a game of bocce. Okay, play. I, I'm game. Let's let's do this. So, our goal to clean the deck is actually backfiring. We're ter we're making a terrible mess here, and we're damaging interstellar relations in the process. So, I'm going to call this a win. Let's see what happens. Uh, okay, gee, that was fun. The ambassador grunts a polite farewell, then disappears up the gangway, leaving a trail of dripping slime. That's so awesome that they programmed in the the idea that you could actually attack the ambassador. Cool. Uh, how about this? Did they anticipate this? For these old adventure games, 
Um, I should say, you know, like, obviously there's wanting to sort of beat the game and so on, but, like, when you're just messing around with the game, I feel like there's a lot of fun in trying to figure out, like, what did the programmers anticipate that you would try and do? So it's like, did, did they ever think that someone might be stupid enough to try and eat the slime? Let's see what happens. It tastes like slime. Aren't you glad you didn't step in it? Oh, they even thought of that. Man, imagine programming these games and having to just sit in a room and figure out um, you know, what commands would somebody possibly type? Um, and, you know, uh, just sort of figure out, like, witty responses to each of them. By the way, what's happening to my score? It used to be out of 4,469, right? Why is it now out of 4,513? I've somehow increased the maximum capacity of score I could get. Um, okay, let's go ahead and read the brochure, see what this slimy bastard was trying to convey to us. Uh, the leading export of Blokibibin Gordo is the adventure game Planetfall, written by er S. Eric Maretsky. Uh, buy one today, better yet, buy a thousand. Oh, 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 oh. All right, so interesting break of the fourth wall there, I guess. Um, look at inventory. Let's see what we've got. Uh, inventory. Uh, what, what do I have? Look in pockets. How about that? Ah, the patrol uniform contains an ID card. All right, let's look at the look at ID card. You got to be very like sparse with your verbiage in games like this because uh, you usually can't understand things. Look, the score keeps counting up. That must be the timer, I think. I don't think that's my score. That's somehow the timer. Um, Stellar Patrol Special Assignment Task Force ID six one. Okay, blah 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 blah. It looks like a phone number in reverse, actually. Okay, let's go back to scrubbing the floors. Let's go back to what we're actually supposed to uh, do here. Scrub floors. Uh, scrub deck. So they thought of eating slime, but the word floor eluded them. That's, uh, that's an oversight, I'd say. Floor's a bit shinier now. How about, let's do it again. Let's get crazy with it. Um, what? I don't know the word scrub. Um, what? What? That is, that is so weird. Okay, hold on. Did I did I typo something? S C R U B. Are you guys seeing this? What what was that about? Scrub. Am I stupid? I'm staring at the words. They're identical, aren't they? What the heck? The game just totally forgot a word. I think the game's so old it has uh, mild uh, dementia. Okay, how about clean up slime? Can we do that? A uh, few. You've cleaned up maybe one ten thousandth of the slime. If you hurry, it might be clean before Ensign Blather gets here. Okay. Clean up more slime. I don't know the word more. Okay. Clean up. Let's not try and get fancy here. Um, oh, my God. Sk whoa, wait, wait. Clean up slime. That worked before. What? Now it works? I'm so confused. Clean up slime. Sometimes it knows words, and sometimes it's... I've never seen an adventure game do that before, guys. Um, okay, I guess I'll continue to clean up the slime here. Um, now, Planetfall apparently is known for having a very limited uh, inventory system. Um, basically, it has a lot of red herrings. Um, and so there's things that you can get that are not really useful or necessary. Apparently, you also have a hunger and thirst timer. I'm just continuing to clean up slime here. Um, and you get weaker every day if you don't sort of like eat or sleep. Um, there are elements of the game that are randomized, which is kind of cool. Um, but it makes it difficult to sort of predict the game. Um, so for instance, right now, as I hang out on the deck here, I'm really just kind of waiting for like an event to happen. And we're going to have to like peace out of the spaceship before it explodes. But uh, until that happens, like there's nothing, th there's kind of nothing to do. Well, let's say look... Uh, let, let, let's leave the deck here because I feel like we're just kind of uh, going in circles. Um, apparently you're supposed to save early and often to avoid getting trapped due to the randomness of this game. Um, but okay, let's um, let's see. Anywhere, I, I'm just looking at a, at a guide here. So we have to like wait until there's an explosion. Let's just try and leave the deck though. How about go north? You can't go that way. Go south. You can't go that way. Go west? Okay. Uh, go east. Ah, there we go. Now we're somewhere different. 
the reactor lobby. The corridor widens here as it nears the main drive area. The starboard, uh, to starboard is the ion reactor that powers the vessel. Oh, we're in the warp core. And aft of here is the auxiliary control room. The corridor continues to port. Ensign Blather, his uniform immaculate, enters and notices you away from your post. 20 demerits, Ensign 7th class, bellows Blather. 40 if you're not back in deck 9 in 5 seconds. He hurls his face into a hideous mask of disgust at your unbelievable negligence. Well, we're not going to let him have the last laugh, are we, guys? Okay, so hold on. To starboard is the iron reactor. Go starboard. Uh, Ensign Blather blocks your way, snarling angrily. I said return to your post, Ensign 7th Class, bellows Blather, turning a deepening shade of crimson. We're going to push this guy as far as we can go. Um, so, starboard is the iron reactor. How about go aft? Um, Ensign Blathers pushes you roughly back towards your post. I said return to your post, Ensign 7th Class, be bellows Blather, uh, turning a deepening shade of crimson. All right, He's just getting really pissed at us. All right, let's go back west. Okay, we're back at the deck. Um, let's see. Oh, wait, it says something different. Uh, Swagger's in. He studies your work with half-closed eyes. You call this polishing Ensign 7th class? He sneers. We have a position for an Ensign 9th class in toilet scrubbing division, you know. 30 demerits. He glares at you, his arms crossed. This, what is this, like a Harry Potter book? Like we're earning merits and demerit points? Okay, how about this? We're not gonna take this crap from Blather. He may outrank us, but he'll, he'll never outrank our dignity. So, oh, what? We don't know the word punch. How about hit Blather? Let's see what happens. Boom! Oh, he kills me! Uh-oh. Blather's removed several of your appendages and internal organs. Or, oh well, according to the Treaty of Gishin uh, 4, Signed in 8747GY, all Adventure Games players must be given another chance after dying. In the interest of interstellar peace, would you like to play again? Oh man, we totally got killed. I, I, I don't know all the union rules in the future, but I'm pretty sure even if an employee hits you, you're not allowed to just straight up kill them. Um, okay, let's, uh, let's go back through this again. Uh, you, you know what sucks? Is now we gotta... Uh, now we just gotta like do everything that we were doing already. Scrub floor. Um, here comes the ambassador. So see, it took a couple of scrubs there for the ambassador to uh, come through. Oh no, wait, this is this is a uh, blather. Oh wow. Okay, so see what I mean about sort of randomness. Um, so blather comes in. Um, talk to blather. Let's see what he says. Blather shouts, speak when you're spoken to, Ensign Seven Class. He breaks three pencil points in a frenzied uh, rush to give you more demerits. How about apologize to Blather? Let's suck up this time. Oh, he doesn't know how to apologize. Sorry. I don't know the word. Say sorry. Nope. Um, look at Blather. Let's see what he looks like. Ensign Blather's a tall, beefy officer with tremendous misshapen nose. Ugh. His uniform is perfect in every respect, and the crease in his trousers could probably slice diamonds in half. Um, befriend Blather. All right, how about some of that uh, that famous gaming J charm? Break it out, boy. We're try trying to seduce this guy onto our side. I don't know the word befriend. Oh, God. Uh, talk to Blather. Let's see what he says. Uh, oh, yeah, speak when spoken to. Okay, well, how about this? I'm just going to continue to scrub the floors. Not shrub, but scrub floor. Um, okay. Uh, let's see. The floor is a bit shinier now. Blather, adding 50 more to Paris for good measure, moves off in search of more young ensigns to terrorize. All right, so that happened. Uh, we'll continue to scrub the floor, I guess. This is like all you can do at the beginning of the game is scrub the floor and not get killed by your superior officer. This has a very sort of space questy vibe to it. Like in Space Quest, you were a janitor. Uh, that that was sort of the joke. Like you ended up going on this like grand space adventure, but you were basically just uh, like a janitor. All right, something new has happened. Um, the randomness is is kind of interesting. I think in this first level here, where there's nothing to do but scrub the floor, it's a little tedious, so you just have to wait and wait and wait and hope for something to happen. But I could see how this randomness could make the game more interesting later on. 
Um, but going back to Space Quest for just a second, yeah, Space Quest in this game both sort of have a kind of Douglas Adams feel to it, where they're sort of like space adventures, but they're kind of like comical and jokey. Um, anyway, uh, let's read the brochure. Why not? Let's uh, talk to Ambassador. Let's see what he says. Um, so the ambassador asks if you were performing some sort of religious ceremony. Perform religious ceremony. I don't know the word perform. Yes. Uh, the sound that you sound rather positive. The ambassador grunts a polite farewell and disappears up the gangway, leaving a trail of dripping slime. That's interesting. So last time he wanted to play a game of bocce with me. This time he's asking about a religious ceremony. I, you know, I really like this randomness. It sort of mixes the game up. I feel like that's kind of cool, actually. Um, it'd be neat. You know what would be neat is if this game. And I don't know if there's an adventure game that does this, but a butterfly effect adventure game where little tiny decisions lead to like changes and in interactions. So for instance, if you spend the first three turns scrubbing the floors, then Blather will come in and like berate you. But if you scrub the floor twice and then try to leave, then like it leads to like a whole different chain of events, you know, where like small changes. So it'd be cool if the game had both the randomness and the impact of small changes that accumulated to lead to different interactions. That would be a really neat adventure game that would lead to a lot of replay um anyway so uh let's uh clean up slime clean up slime and we'll keep scrubbing the floor and scrubbing the floor and eventually eventually something's going to happen guys so i'm just going to keep on keep on keeping on here Scrub floor. This is going to be the, the shiny. I'm scrubbing the same bit of floor over and over again. I'm just going to polish it until I've pretty much worn through the metal. Scrub floor. It's also interesting how scrub floor and clean up slime lead to different results. Whenever you say clean up slime, it sounds as if there's slime everywhere. But when you scrub the floor, then it sounds like the floor is actually uh, getting clean. Okay. So while I continue to do this, what else can we talk about here? Um, so if you bought this game back in the day, this game would come with feelies, they were called. They were essentially, you'd get like in, in the game box. Um, oh, something's happened. Okay, hold on. In the game box, you would get like an ID card, a uh, stellar postcard, stellar patrol recruiting manual. You basically get swag. They called it feelies back in the day, but Infocom would give you swag. Um, and I remember adventure games would do this occasionally. Like, I think when you bought Leisure Suit Larry, you got, like, a cocktail napkin with, like, a girl's phone number on it or something like that. Kind of, like, as a joke um, in the game box. Um, that's one of the sad things about all games going digital now is, like, cool little, like, uh, add-on things like that are, are becoming more infrequent. Although, usually games have some kind of, like, uh, collector's edition limited release. It has lots of swag in it. So, you know, swag. It was a thing back then. It's a thing now. Anyway, uh, the floor's a bit shinier. Instant first class blather swaggers in. He studies your work with half-closed eyes. You call this polishing? He sneers. Have a position for an ensign, blah, blah. This is the same stuff he said before to me. All right, I'm just going to continue to scrub the floor. I'm going to pretend I don't hear him. I'm just going to totally ignore what he says. Scrub floor. And eventually, the floor's a bit shinier. A massive explosion rocks the ship. Finally, some action. Um... Echoes from the explosion resound deafeningly down the halls. The door to the port uh, slides open. Blather, confused by this non-routine occurrence, orders you to continue scrubbing the floor and then dashes off. <laughs> Everything is okay. Continue scrubbing the floor. The ship's just exploding a little bit. Okay, so we totally got a bail on this. Not least of all because Blather sucks. Um, so this is a featureless corridor. We've read all this, read all this, read all this. Um, to port is the entrance to one of the ship's primary escape pods. Here's our ticket out of here, guys. The pod bulkhead is open. More distant explosions, a narrow emergency bulkhead at the base of the gangway, and a wider one along the corridor starboard crash shut. Okay, uh, so, so we're gonna go port. Go port! That sounds like a, a sports hurrah. This is one of the Feinstein's primary escape pods uh, for use in extreme emergencies, like a giant explosion on the ship, maybe. 
A mass of safety webbing large enough to hold several dozen people fills half the pod. The controls are entirely automated. The bulkhead leading out is open. The pod door clangs shut as the heavy explosions continue to buffet the Feinstein. All right. Uh, get in webbing. Safety webbing. Interesting. So just kind of loosely tangle yourself up in the webbing and we'll take care of the rest. You are now safely cushioned within the webbing. You feel the pod begin to slide down its ejection tube as explosions shake the mothership. Interesting. All right, so are we, like, totally off the ship now? Um, you are in the safety web. This is one of the fine scene's primary escape pods for use in extreme emergencies, blah, blah, blah. L uh, through the view part of the pod, you see the fine scene dwindle as you head away. Bursts of light uh, dot its hull. Suddenly, a huge explosion blows the fine scene into tiny pieces. Sending the escape pod tumbling away. Oh my god. Okay, now what's happening? Um, this is one of the Feinstein. Okay, as the escape pod tumbles away from the former location of the Feinstein, its gyroscopes wind. The pod slowly stops tumbling. Light on the control panel blinks furiously as the autopilot searches for a reasonable destination. Okay. Um... The auxiliary rockets fire briefly, and a nearby planet swings into view through the port. It appears to be almost entirely ocean, with just a few visible islands, and an unusually, an unusually small polar ice cap. A moment later, the system's sun swings into view, and the viewport polarizes into a featureless black rectangle. Oh my. Um, doesn't know the word look. Okay, but now it does. I, I don't understand. Um, blah, 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 blah. The main thrusters fire a long, gentle burst. A monotonic voice issues from the control panel. Approaching planet, human, habitable. All right, now what happens? Um, blah, 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 blah. Large enough to hold. The bulkhead leading out is closed. Okay. Uh, okay. And wait, am I, have I landed or not? Hey, look, we have a score of three. I just noticed. And we're going to wait for some time. The pod is buffeted as it enters the planet's atmosphere. All right, we're going to continue to wait, see what happens. You feel the temperature begin to rise, and the pod's climate control system roars as it labors to compensate. We'll keep waiting. The viewport suddenly becomes transparent again, giving you a view of the endless ocean below. The lights on the control panel flash madly as the pod's computer searches for a suitable landing site. The thrusters fire long and hard, slowing the pod's descent. All right, we're making progress here, guys. The pod is now approaching closer of the pair of islands. It appears to be surrounded by sheer cliffs rising from the water. This feels like uh, Star Trek Beyond or whatever, when, like, Scotty, like, rides the escape pod and, he, like, lands on a cliff and he has to, like... Do some kind of like, uh, you know, triple uh, X gone in 60 seconds, uh, kind of like fast and furious dive off of the cliff to like survive. Anyway, as it's topped by a wide plateau, the plateau seems to be covered by a sprawling complex of buildings. Continue to wait. Pod lands with a thud. Through the viewport, you can see a rocky cleft. Uh, and some water below. The pod rocks gently back and forth as if it was precariously balanced. Uh, previously un This is exactly from Star Trek. Previously unseen panel slides open revealing some emergency provisions including a survival kit and towel. <laughs> Always bring a towel. That's totally a Douglas Adams Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy reference. Alright, let's uh, take the kit. Uh, you can't reach it from here. Oh, get out of webbing. Let's see. Uh, as you stand, the pod shifts slightly and you feel it falling. A moment later, the fall stops with a shock and you see water rising past the viewport. Oh, God. Okay, take kit. Uh, take towel. We need that towel, man. Taken. The pod is now completely submerged and you feel it smash against underwater rocks. Bubbles streaming upwards past the window indicate the pod is continuing to sink. Get out of pod. Flee for your life. The pod door is closed. Oh, God. Open pod door. Um, oh, I died! The bulkhead opens and cold ocean water rushes in between the swirling waters with increasing pressure. It's curtains for you. Perhaps you should have left the pod a bit sooner. Oh, no. Do we not have time to get both the kit and the towel? That sucks. Oh, once more into the breach, eh? I'm ignoring the ambassador this time around, by the way. He's introducing himself. I'm not even going to say hi. Oh, scub floor. Scrub. I'm just going to scrub the floor. Um, and <laughs> the ambassador remarks that all humans look alike to him. Yes. Well, uh, carry on. The ambassador grunts a polite farewell, disappears. 
Totally ignored the ambassador this time around. This time, you know what? If Blather comes to harass us, we're going to give him shit. I'm not going to put up with his crap anymore. We're going to mess with that guy. I have read there are some funny things you can do to him, so we're totally going to do those things. Ah, here he is. Speak of the devil. He glares at us with arms crossed. Well, Blather, things are about to get a little sexier in here. Take off clothes. Oh, my God. Take off uniform, you idiot. Uh, you've removed your patrol uniform. Removing your uniform while on duty? 500 demerits. Take off underpants. It's time to get real sexy in here. Oh, well, come on. Okay, how about this? Let's give B Blather a little scrub down. Um, the Ensign First Class prefers cleaning himself. I don't care what he prefers. This is happening. <laughs> I'm in my underwear and I'm going to scrub you down, Blather. Okay, well, you can't. All right, well, that's basically all you can do to mess with Blather. Uh, all right, we're now, we're now naked doing our work. You know what? I, cleaning naked is the way to go, man. Cleaning naked is the way to go. It, uh... It it, uh, it gives you like more agility, you know. You can you're more freedom of movement. You can really sort of get in there and like polish the corners because like you're not being held down by the confines of a tight fitting uniform. Just clean in the nude, man. That's that's how adventure gamers do it. So um, you guys sort of are probably getting the idea of this game now. I wanna I do want to try and like get out of the pod and do like a little bit more of this game, but I feel like. Uh, like with a lot of these adventure games, pretty much the fun of the game is in the story. And um, watching me sort of continue to fail the story is probably not super interesting. I mean, what's more fun is to get this game and like try it for yourself. Try and like go through, uh, you know, the adventure and seeing what's going to happen next. And it, this game is like remarkably slow to get started. I thought we'd get a little farther than this. But as I say, we're going to get to the pod again. I am going to get out of the pod, and we'll kind of see see what else is there. Um, but do you guys, for any of you guys who actually played these old adventure games back in the day, do you remember, like, I remember when I played these games, I would, like, have, like, a notepad, and I would, like, write out notes of, like, things. Like, don't do this or he'll kill you. Here's how you get past this part. I would, like, draw maps and stuff about, like, where different things were, um... I remember it also, like, just getting your character to do something new was, like, a big deal, you know? Like, oh my god, I figured out that you can try and scrub blather and it will say something to you. I figured out that eat slime is something the developers thought of and they'll actually have a response if you type in eat slime, right? Like, there's... Figuring out that there's things you can do, even if they get you killed, are kind of funny. Like, the secrets... Like, these adventure games are almost all Easter eggs, you know? Like, the, the fun of the game is figuring out what you can and can't do in the game. Uh, my god, this is going... This is excessive. Are you guys seeing this? Oh, finally. Finally. Oh, no, it's just Blathers coming to harass me again. Okay, how about I'll just... I'll just start waiting. Okay, there we go. Go port. Uh, get in webbing... Boom! All right, now we now we just wait. Now we just wait, and as soon as the ship lands, this is when we're going to. Um, this is when we're going to uh, get out. Okay, here we go. It lands. Um, so we land. The thrust is fire long and hard, slowing the descent, and. The pod is now approaching a closer pair of the islands. It appears surrounded. It is topped by a wide plateau. Okay, almost there. Uh, the planet... Okay, it lands. Okay, get out of webbing. Okay. Get kit. Okay. Uh, leave pod. Boom! Oh, the, oh, no, it's completely emerged! Oh, no, open pod door! No! Oh, God, okay. Uh... Uh, how do we get out of here? Leave pod. Leave the pod! Uh, you are momentarily disoriented as you enter a turbulent waters. Currents buffet. They like the word buffet in this game, or buffet. The currents buffet. Currents buffet against your sharp, against the sharp rocks of an underwater cliff. A dim light filters down from above. Swim up! Um, crag. You have reached a cleft in the cliff wall where island... Where the island rises from the water. The edge of the cleft displays recently exposed rock. 
where it collapsed under the weight of the escape pod about two meters below. Turbulent water swirl against sharp rocks. A small structure clings to the face of the cliff about eight meters above you. Even an out of shape Ensign 7 class could probably climb up to it. All right, we'll climb up. Um, balcony. This is an uh, octagonal room half carved uh, into and half built out uh, from the cliff wall. Okay, so kind of like that uh, temple in Indiana Jones and Last Crusade at the very end. Through the shattered windows which ring the outer wall, you can see ocean to the horizon. A weathered metal plaque with barely readable lettering rests below the windows. The language seems to be corrupt form of Galagua. A steep stairway roughly cut into the face of the cliff leads upward. A rocky crag can be seen eight meters below. Let's just go up. Why not? Winding stair. The middle of a long, steep stairway carved into the face of a cliff. Go up. This seems to be working out for us. Courtyard. You're in the courtyard of an ancient stone edifice, vaguely reminiscent of the castles you saw during your leave on Ramos II. It is decayed to the point where it can probably be termed a ruin, uh, openings leading lead north and west to the stairway downward is visible to the south. Well, going up has worked for us so far. Let's just keep doing it. Go up. Or how about go north? All right, we're in the plain hall. This is a featureless hall leading north and south. Although the hallway is old and dusty, the construction is of much more modern style than the castle to the south. A similar hall branches off to the northeast. Go northeast. We're just... Wait, what? What? You, but you, you told me the word. You're the one who showed me the word. What? Go north east. What? I don't understand. Am I typing it wrong? N-O-R-T-H-E-A-S-T. What? <laughs> okay, whatever. Just go north. Um, rec area. This is a recreational facility of some sort. Games and tapes are scattered about the room. Hallways head off to the east and south, and to the north is a door which is closed and locked. A dial on the door is currently set to zero. Okay. Uh, set dial to nine. Why not? The dial is now set to nine. Kick in door! <laughs> I don't understand the sentence. Kick door! Kicking the door has no effect. Okay. How about let's play a game? You don't know the word game. Look at games. Uh, all the usual games. Chess, Cribbage, Galactic Overlord, Double Fanucci. Okay, play Galactic Overlord. It'd be funny if you typed this in, then all of a sudden like it launched a totally different game. Hey, we have six points, by the way. Um, I don't know the word Galact... Oh, I spelled Galactic wrong. Play Galactic Overlord. I don't... Oh, my God. Okay, um, let's go east. Let's, let's go to one more room and see what's going on. A wide, this is a wide east-west hallway. Portals lead north and south and all, all other directions. Go east. Yet another hallway. We'll try going east one more time. The dorm corridor. This is a wide east-west hallway with openings north and south. The corridor stretches off into the distance. That uh, section of the hallway is lined with motorized walkway. No longer running that was probably intended to transport people or cargo down that tremendous long haul wow we stumbled into a whole like little sci-fi facility here a whole sci-fi facility um i kind of want to like end on like something interesting so um let's let's just keep going east and see what we got corridor junction i'm just gonna keep going until we like encounter someone um go east I i'm also totally lost this is a tiny room with a large two painted on the walls. The panel contains a slot 10 centimeters with a brown button labeled one and a tan button labeled three. Uh, let's see, press button one. I don't understand the sat sentence. Press button. <laughs> press button. Uh, which button do you mean, the brown or the pro? Uh, let's press brown button. Let's see what happens. Sign flashes. Transportation books not activated. Okay, press tan button. Let's see what happens. Teleportation box not activated. Okay. We gotta find something interesting here. Jump off catwalk. That would be a good trick. I you know what? I'm literally I've gotten lost in this facility. I don't know which way anything is anymore. I'm I've been walking around trying to find someone or something. <laughs> 
<laughs> I, 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 I can't go any direction. I don't know, guys. Um, wait, go west, can't go that way. Go north, can't go that way. Go south, can't go that way. Go east, can't go that way. Where am I? I'm trapped. I'm literally trapped. Uh, the northeast and the southeast corners. Oh, God. Go northeast. Don't know the word northeast. Go southeast. Don't know the word southeast. We're literally, we're literally trapped. I, f I, I found a way to fail at a text-based adventure game. I'm literally trapped. There's two exits to the room, and it doesn't understand the direction. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, my God. All right, well, uh, this is literally as far as we can go. I tried, guys. I gave it I gave it a shot. I gave it a bit of a shot, at least. A bit of a shot, we'll say. Um, Planetfall here. We did successfully make Planetfall, by the way. We made it to the planet. We earned a whopping six points out of 6,281 possible points. I'm pretty sure that's a timer. Pretty sure that's not how many points you've got. It's it's written as if that's your score. Kind of a weird way to write your score, though. Um, this is a well-known, uh, popular adventure game. I mean, in 1992, there was a Japanese remake of this game for the NEC PC 9801 computer system, which is a huge mouthful. I have no idea what computer system that is, by the way. I mean, it took me long enough to learn about Atari STs and Amigas and ZX Spectrums. Um, you know, like, I, I knew about DOS computers, uh, you know, when, like, years ago. But, like, it took me a while to, like, fully understand what an Amiga was and stuff. Jap Japan's, like, an unknown continent. I still don't get all their computers. It's just, like, a whole other ball game there. But, uh, by the way, how interesting would it be if, uh, instead of PC and Mac, like, Amiga was still around, like, we had modern Amiga computers? That'd be pretty cool, eh? Anyway, that's a total side note. I I'm getting super sidetracked here. Planetfall is one of the games in the book, A Thousand One Video Games You Must, uh, Die. Hold on, can we call for Blathers? Maybe he'll come save us. Nope. <laughs> Doesn't know how to call things. Um, this is a, a, a fairly funny game, I will say. Like, even just a little bit that we saw here today... Um, it does sort of have that Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy feel. It feels a bit like Space Quest. Um, I could see this actually being an interesting game worth playing. The thing about these old text adventure games is, yeah, they're dated now because they don't have graphics, but in a way, they're kind of timeless because they're just like choose-your-own-adventure novels. Um, now, you do have to kind of get over the poor text parsers of the time. Like, there's so many times... You, like, it doesn't even understand the direction northeast. There's an exit in that direction. I don't know what you're supposed to do with that. I don't know how you're supposed to get in that door. So you do have to kind of put up with a bad text parser. But beyond that, like, the game itself is still funny and interesting to read because it's a choose-your-own-adventure book, essentially, um, as it ever was. So... Yeah, you know, like, has this game aged well? In some ways, no, but in other ways, it's kind of always going to be interesting to come back to. So I totally get why people would remake this um, in Japanese, I guess. Like, it had a big enough following that there's now literally a Japanese-language version of it uh, on the Japanese NEC computers. But, you know, is this a game worth playing today? I would say, like, if you're interested in the story, yeah, it, it totally is. Um, if you're not interested in the story or you really hate reading... Um, or text adventure games, and you're not going to find this game fun. Um, it does have the same old tropes of, like, easy deaths and stuff that uh, were common in text adventure games and Sierra. I feel like LucasArts is the one uh, game company, and now especially Telltale, where, like, they really get away from, like, the cheap, easy deaths. Um, but back in the day, this is what this is how adventure games went, man. You, like, died like crazy. You died stubbing your toe uh, walking through a doorway if you weren't careful. And you had to know the precise cryptic way of typing in every action you want to occur. But, uh, but yeah, anyway. So uh, those are my thoughts on Planetfall. What do you guys think of this game? Do you think it looks like a funny, interesting game? Have you yourself played and beat it? Or is it a game that you're just sort of checking out today and maybe stumbled onto my channel looking for a video about it? Whatever the case may be, let me know in the comments down below. I like hearing your guys' take on these games as well. And remember, my opinion is never the be-all, end-all. Um, and as always, guys, whatever you think of the game today, hopefully I have made it somewhat entertaining for you. If I have, don't forget to slap the like button. Don't forget to subscribe and come back soon because I will be continuing my quest to play through the book, A Thousand One Games, just play before you die. Um, and we got some good games coming up, so you don't want to miss out on those. Anyway, guys, it has been a blast getting lost in space with you. Um, I hope you agree, and I hope to see you soon. Until next time, everyone out there, you all take care of yourselves, and, uh... Peace. Like, I can't figure out how to get out of this room.
Go north east. Why don't you understand the word? North east. Ah, damn it. I've never encountered this before, guys. Never encountered this before. I, 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 how, how, what am I doing wrong? What am I doing wrong? I beg your pardon. You're damn right, game. Let me out of this room. Uh, 